What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review of the second follow-up to the e-reader that started the e-reader craze. This is of course the Amazon Kindle 3. So the first two Kindles, while very useful and quite revolutionary, were not what you'd qualify as pretty. Uh, in fact, they were ugly electronics. They just didn't look good. They were cool to use, sort of having the e-reader thing was new, but in the world of nice looking electronics, slick design, the Kindle was not keeping pace. The Kindle 3 really fixes that, and I'm proud to say it's actually a very nice looking device. Let's take a look at the aesthetics, and then we'll run down all the specs. So this guy is quite thin. How thin, you ask? Well, let's turn it to the side and bring in a mechanical pencil. You can see that this thing really, really, really is uh, quite thin. Uh, from a size standpoint, it's 7.5 inches diagonal by 4.8 inches diagonal by 0.335 inches, and it weighs a minuscule 8.5 ounces. So this one has a six inch diagonal screen. You can also get the Kindle DX with a 9.7 inch screen. Uh, this version here is the Wi-Fi only version. It's gonna set you back $140. You can kick in some 3G there as well and everything will look exactly the same. Uh, but it's gonna add about an extra 50 bucks to your purchase price, bringing you up to $190. Storage wise, it can store just about 3,500 eBooks. Battery life with the wireless off is an extremely impressive one month. Uh, with the wireless on, it's going to be three weeks. You can download books from the Kindle store, which I'll show you guys in just about 60 seconds. This now has native PDF support, which is really nice. You don't have to pay for it anymore. You just email it to your Kindle address. Uh, of course, it says Kindle and Amazon's Whisper Sync, which sort of syncs up where you are on all of your books. So if you have a Kindle app on your iPad or Kindle app on your iPhone, Android device, I'll always know right where you are. Uh, it's got text-to-speech, we'll show you speakers on the back in just a minute. And you can now look at content in portrait and landscape view, uh, which is quite nice. And of course, really one of the biggest sellers of the Kindle is its 6-inch e-ink display. And e-ink is what you're looking at right here. It's supposed to look like, well, ink, but e. Uh, one of the downsides of reading a book on, let's say, an iPad, or another sort of LCD type device is that there's usually a decent amount of glare and you're gonna have some problems in direct sunlight. Uh, not so with an e-ink display, it's also supposed to reduce some of your eye strain. All right, so let's go ahead and run through what the hardware looks like. Of course, you've got now a physical QWERTY keyboard on the front, which was there on the previous two versions, uh, but this time it has been redesigned. The keys are a little bit raised, they're still round. You've got a new navigation here on the right. It's a five-way toggle, so up, down, left, right, and select. Now I have new page forward and back buttons. They're sort of stuck into the side here, and they're not so large, you're gonna accidentally hit them while you're holding it. They're sort of right on the border, and they have a nice clicky feel to it. The back is now made of a nice soft touch uh, almost rubbery plastic feel. It really feels nice to hold in the hand. Uh, I've got two speakers up top and on the bottom you've got your power and lock switch. You've got volume up and down, micro USB charging, 3.5 millimeter headset jack. On the top you've got nothing. Let's go ahead and kick the device actually on here. One of the other downsides of the first two Kindle devices, when you wanted to turn a page, the page turn was extremely slow. Uh, the Kindle 3 has really fixed that as far as page turn speed. Let me go ahead and open up a book and show you. I was reading, let's say, Freakonomics here. Take a second to open up the book and I'll pull up right where you were. Page turn is extremely fast. Uh, it's relatively close to almost instantaneous. As soon as you push the button, content is almost already there. You don't have to wait now, half a second, a second which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're reading a lot of books, that certainly adds up, especially if you're looking at a couple hundred pages. So the speed increase is really nice. Uh, one of the other great things about the Kindle is of course the Kindle Store, which now has at last count over 550,000 books. Uh, now you're probably saying, why do I need a Kindle when I can download the Kindle app on a myriad of applications? And that's really what Amazon is struggling with. Uh, I picked up the Kindle mostly because I was having some eye strain doing a lot of reading on the iPad, uh, the device that I've been using for the majority of my books. Also, when I'm outside in direct sunlight, I was having a lot of trouble reading it. Uh, the Kindle really uh, alleviates that, and for a relatively inexpensive entry point of $140, 
uh, it's sort of a nice carry-on device. And the fact that it's so thin, I mean, it's not gonna take up much space in my bag. So there are a few other new features with the Kindle 3 as well. Let me show you what those are. Uh, it now has a full WebKit-based browser, which you might think is weird on an e-ink display. Uh, WebKit is just sort of an open set of standards that uh, Apple used on the iPhone, Google used on Android, and Palm used on WebOS. So it makes it for a very nice browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Menu. And it's still qualified as experimental. So we'll go ahead and open up the experimental section. I'll zoom in sort of off the keyboard a little bit more on the screen. And you can see what some of the other experimental sections are here. Uh, you've got the web browser, Play MP3s, and text-to-speech. This will actually read books back to in plain English. Let's go ahead and launch the browser. I'll show you what this looks like. I don't know if you really use this for much web browsing. You probably have a smartphone or something in your pocket. Uh, but it is kind of cool that it, it does work. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. Let's go ahead and launch a website. So we'll open up, let's say, let's go to enter URL. Let's try technobuffalo.com. And it pulls up sort of a web page looking top part there. You can see go to it back in front shows you your Wi-Fi strength and battery. So we'll type in technobuffalo. And the keyboard's really easy to type on. Now, one of the uh, the downsides, of course, of the Kindle and the e-inks in general uh, is that they are not backlit. And of course, I typed Techno Buffalo wrong uh, on camera, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that in. Um, is that it's not a backlit display. So if you're trying to read this in the dark, uh, you're going to have a bit of trouble. So let's try this one more time as I talk about how nice the keyboard is. Get a little nervous sometimes on camera. Go to Techno Buffalo. There we go. Dot com. Let's go ahead and check load times. Hit go to and see what this looks like here. If you saw the web browser on the Kindle 2, you'll know it was a poor excuse for a web browser. Pretty much just pulled in text. Uh, no support for images or anything. This actually looks like a website. You can zoom in on text and sort of read what you'd like. You can select your hyperlinks. You can see that box sort of shows up there with the magnifying glass. You can just zoom in on the text that you're looking at. Uh, really works surprisingly well. You see, even has a pop up there. Uh, you might actually be able to use this uh, as a web browser. Kind of neat. Let's go ahead and jump back on home. Primarily, this is a ebook reader, and that's really where it succeeds. Um, my biggest thing with the older Kindles was you had to pay to get some PDF functionality. It wasn't even native. Uh, it really only had it on the larger Kindle DX. Now that's fully supported here. So I was reading uh, a JetBlue case. And you go ahead and open that up and you now get, really, it opens up a PDF. Uh, one of the things I like too as well is that you can view content now uh, in landscape or portrait. I go ahead and hit the button right down here that will narrowly change the font size. I'm gonna get the option to rotate the screen. You can see it right there. So I can view it with the pictures on top, images down below, left, right, uh, orientation, fit the screen or zoom any way I want. Uh, the Kindle now just has increased functionality. Now, it's certainly not meant to replace an iPad. Uh, the iPad does a ton of different things. Uh, one of the things that it does do is happen to have ebook functionality. This is a dedicated device just meant for ebook reading. And uh, a lot of you guys might be struggling with why, again, why would I need a Kindle when I have another companion device? Uh, and again, the eye strain, the visibility to view this in direct sunlight, and sort of the, uh, the, the easy to readness, if you will. Uh, of the e-ink uh, really makes this a nice value proposition, coupled with the fact that it's so light and that it can hold so many books. Uh, it's very simple to use, it's easy to use. I could give this to my grandparents, for example, and they would know how to use it. Uh, it downloads books very quick. You've got access to the Amazon store, which I will go ahead and show you right now, the Kindle store. So go ahead and hit menu, and we'll jump on over the store. You can see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and shop in the Kindle store. And uh, one of the great things as well about this, you can download uh, previews of books. You get the first chapter and see if it's something that you want to read. You've got the Kindle store. You can view New York Times, Kindle top sellers, and a ton of other ways to sort your text. Uh, knowing what you're getting into, if you're looking for an ebook reader, that's just an ebook reader that's thin and light and is going to last you for many plane flights. Uh, there really isn't much of another choice now other than the Kindle 3. Uh, the Nook is out there, but it's still considered last generation. Uh, compared with this version of the Kindle, a few Sony devices as well. So knowing what you're getting into, looking for an ebook reader, this is definitely a five-star device uh, through for through size and for functionality, and now for speed, uh, truly addressed all the concerns I had with the previous generation. Uh, not to mention price. 
So anyway guys, sort of an overview and review of the Amazon Kindle 3. I'm kind of curious what you, hear you guys have to say. Are you interested in an e-reader? Do you have no need because you have an iPad or another device? You read books on your iPhone or Android phone? Uh, want to know what you have to say? For exclusive content, check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash john lakers And for all your tech news, check out technobuffalo.com. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.